One of the worst arguments you can make about why you're doing something is, well, we've always done it that way. In previous episodes, I've brought up how good things can bring upon even bad ones and bad events can bring upon good things. For example, many have said that people won't have to drive to work every day or fly across the country so often for business purposes because of the rise of Zoom. Good news, now people will save lots of money on gas. So despite the doomsday scenario that you've been hearing, good things are happening to sports because of COVID-19. Here's five examples. Fans don't go to them and players get hurt in them. And the notion that you need these games to see if your rookie draft picks are any good, that's a myth. It's a myth made up to keep preseason games alive. Coaches and general managers have reportedly said on multiple occasions that after the first week or several days of practice, you can tell who can make it in the NFL and who can't. Rent to win games are like preseason games for college football, except they're worse. They're during the season. Now, this really isn't set in stone yet, but the Pac-12 and the Big Ten are moving forward with it this season. And that's really all that college football needs. You just need one or two to get it set in motion, and the rest will follow. Here's a news flash: Nobody wants to watch a game where we know the final score is going to be 71-15. to It's a bad product with little upside, and... That's never a good thing for sports. Well, what about Appalachian State and Troy that one time? There are always exceptions to rules, but we never should make rules for exceptions. Whenever I hear people say, I'm so excited for regular season baseball to start, and then I hear 162 games, like, how the fuck am I supposed to get excited about that? We live in an era of urgency with so many forms of entertainment. That's why football in a lot of ways has become the most popular sport in America. It's one game a week and every game matters. In this case, less is more. Now, I think 60 games for Major League Baseball, which is what they're doing right now, I think it's a little too short. I think around 80 games is well within range. But hopefully, this 60 game season will open their eyes to Major League Baseball about potentially shortening their regular season. Now, not to be a downer, but I have very little confidence that Major League Baseball is actually going to do this. But... Speaking of shortening their season, NBA seriously needs to shorten theirs. They also need to start on Christmas. Star NBA players usually sit out around 20 games a year because they want to stay healthy and not get hurt in time for the playoffs. Noticing a theme here. This NBA season got cut short around 60 games due to the coronavirus, and it's pretty clear we know who the best teams are after 60 games. Now look, these added extra games that are happening right now in the bubble in Orlando, if the Pelicans make the playoffs and Zion gets in the playoffs because of these extra games, great. They're still not winning the championship, and I'm a Pelicans fan. And because of the NBA playoffs will end in October, the NBA is now forced to start on Christmas instead of starting in October in the middle of football season, which is kicking their ass in popularity and ratings. Now, the name, image, and likeness debate for college athletes has been picking up steam for the past year or so, but COVID could actually speed it up even more. Now, for the past month, several NCAA higher-ups and administrators have been testifying in front of Congress to debate this issue. But what's come up recently is athletes signing non-legal waivers in case they get sick or test positive for COVID-19. And at these congressional hearings with the NCAA, one University of Baltimore law professor brought up something interesting. Indeed, if athletes are currently able to sign waivers to facilitate their return to practice during a global health pandemic, they should be permitted to make deals to market their name, image, and likeness. A Connecticut senator and a representative from Ohio State University said this. Drake, who was the Ohio State representative, insisted that Ohio State's document was not a legal waiver. Blumenthal, who was the Connecticut senator, bored in on the school's use of it. But here was my favorite part. 
So on behalf of Ohio State University, if any athlete ever sued your institution, you would say no rights have been foregone or waived or sacrificed? I certainly would say that. I hope your lawyers agree with you. I hope so too. Good fucking luck. Sure, there's a lot of bad things that come from pandemics and it, most of it sucks ass. And of course, none of these things that I've outlined are guaranteed to happen or go, go through, but certainly doesn't hurt to put good things in motion.